What's up you guys, it's Graham here, and I'm interviewing a business that's on the verge of making a massive decision that could either make or completely destroy their entire trajectory. Well, what's gonna be the cost of that? 20 to $25,000. I'll be breaking down their financials, assessing the overall situation, and then giving my own recommendations in terms of how to best grow their income with the first $10,000 investment. So basically, if you want to listen in on a very heartfelt, difficult conversation about the realities of growing a business, this is it. And for those unaware, this is also a local Las Vegas business that I've just been a fan of. So I reached out on Instagram to see if they'd be okay going on camera. They said yes, and this is that video. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Kamel, and I am the founder of Coco Cookies. How did you get started making cookies? About 27 years ago, when we came to, uh, to the States, we've been told, you know, uh, baking and cooking in America is, is no good. But I got pleasantly surprised when I tried the American cookie for the first time, you know. It was amazing. And how did you begin selling them? Like, why turn that into a business? It begins with my wife taking them to work. Next thing you know, I have an order or two from uh, the co-workers, you know, the people she works with. Uh, I was just baking for, for the love of baking, you know, and feeding my, the people I love. So instead of doing what most people do, starting with soft butter and creaming it with sugar, we're gonna start with hard butter. We're just gonna cut these in cubes. This is what makes them, again, soft and, you know, chewy. That butter is gonna melt, it's not, completely infused in the butter and, oh. and it creates some magic. How much do they cost to make? So in average, I would say about 60 to 70 cents a cookie. And that cost is just the ingredients. You know, you have to add to that the shipping and the packaging, and that would bring it up to maybe a dollar fifty. And how much do you sell them for? I do sell them for about $3. Why are your cookies so expensive? I only use the best. Grass-fed, organic eggs, butter from Europe, and Belgium chocolate. I like to put the best in my cookie, and I believe that's one component that makes my cookies a little bit better than most. How much are you making every month right now for the cookies? I would say about $1,000. What would you say is the biggest challenge of the business? The biggest challenge for me would be to reach more customers. The product is good. People love it. Yeah. That's amazing. And the salt on top yes. is really complimentary of the like of the, the sugar. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to reach more customers? You know, all we've been doing so far is uh, word of mouth. Do you think you need to do more than word of mouth if you want absolutely. to make more if, money? If I want to scale up, absolutely. We need to uh, maybe do some social media, which I'm really bad at. You know, whatever I do, I, I, it's all me. I try to do everything. And I believe in doing that, I end up doing nothing. I think mm -hmm. your strength is definitely making the cookies yes, and being yeah. the passion behind it. Exactly. Uh, and, and that's what I want to yeah. be. That's the passion. Yeah. Yes. Your wife is really good at speaking with people. She can oh, sell yeah. anybody anything. If yes. she talks to you about yes. the cookies, she'll yes. sell the cookies. She does. Now, she was telling me, she mentioned that mm -hmm. you're thinking about opening up a storefront. Yes, yes. We, we are in the, in the process, actually, to opening one. What's going to be the cost of that? About twenty to $25,000. Yeah. And then how much every month to keep that running? I would say between utility and rent, you know, the store is about $5,000. Why a storefront? Why not go heavier now on marketing and see if you could make $5,000 a month online, gain some momentum and then do the storefront? Yeah, because it seems like 25 grand upfront expense mm -hmm. is high. It is, yeah. Locking yourself into $5,000 a month payments yeah. is high. Mm -hmm. You'll probably be able to make easy one to two thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. so that leaves you with a deficit of probably three grand a month two That's grand a month assuming yeah. nothing really changes it just you know i was never a, a marketing guy like i said earlier you know I'm, I'm not into social media or anything like that so i'm a person who like people contact i like to see people you know offer them a cookie make a friend you know <laughs> and go from there usually you know so instead of using a, a scoop to make them look you know, very commercial, we're gonna use our hands and make them look chunky. And the reason actually they are looking so dry and crumbly is what gives them that long lasting chewiness in the inside. So that's one of the secrets. So when people are making cookies, what's the biggest mistake that you see them make? Probably the ingredients they use. Right. I always say when the ingredients are bad, your cookie will be bad. And the way you make them, you gotta make them with love. Just from what I see, yeah. it makes sense that like, if it's marketing that's holding back some of the sales, 
That's true, yeah. A storefront would be good for people to see visually. And mm -hmm. you could say you could come by the store. Yeah, you can't yeah, quite yeah. say, I hey, come by the you. house. So yeah. The store will help. Yeah. But like marketing is something you could be doing now. Yeah. And you could have been doing a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would love to do that. Yeah. So yeah. I'll tell you, I yeah. did a lot of research on cocoa cookies. Yeah. And I had a few critiques here. Yes. I've noticed throughout social media, sometimes you spell cookies yeah. with an S and sometimes yeah. with a Z. Yeah. And it's very confusing. Because that was the one thing I noticed you're missing, I think, yeah. on, it was Etsy, mm -hmm. is that I think there's only one review on there. The yeah. name on Etsy is totally different. It's actually Chanel's Coco Box. My other complaint is that you haven't yeah. posted on Instagram since September of 2023. Yeah. And your posts were really good. Like the pictures were fantastic. Really? Okay. I think the one thing you're missing is that yeah. it's way too corporate. When I look at your Instagram page, the yeah. pictures are fantastic. Really? Okay. The cookies look really good, yeah. but there's the, no soul behind it. It's yeah. just like, here's the cookie. Mm -hmm. Look at how amazing this yeah. is. Here's a deal. And they're, you know, getting 13 likes. There's no personality behind that. You don't yeah. get the story behind why you started this. Like I'm mm -hmm. seeing a lot of places on TikTok yes. that will show the behind the scenes of how they make things and will okay. talk about their experiences yeah. baking or making yes. candies. And you yeah. get to see the process from start yeah, yeah. to finish. Yeah. And you have the ability to make it look really viral looking. Like yeah. you like kneading the dough and yeah, you mixing yeah, yeah. it all in and seeing it from start to finish yeah, yeah. and talking Tell about yeah. something along the way. Yeah. And that way, it's not just about the cookie, but it's about the message that you have, mm -hmm. the passion behind the cookie. Yeah, yeah, so. And I think people will just want to experience that because they want to be a part of it. I yeah, don't yeah, think yeah. they necessarily just want, here's a really delicious cookie. I agree. They want a yeah. story behind it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best ways to grow online. It's just a whole yeah. bunch of practice and yeah. not stopping. I'm also curious in terms of the business itself. Do you think you have too many choices of cookie? Yeah. Because I saw about 15, 20 different types. Yeah. Do you think that slows you down not to narrow it to maybe the top 10 most popular? You're probably right, you know. Uh, I just wanted to offer different type of cookies to people versus what they found every day on Etsy and, you know, shops. What would you say the most important thing to do before you open that shop? Marketing. I've always been the type where it's like, yeah. I would only upgrade if mm. the income generated sustains that already. Okay. And so I worry about like having a big payment if yeah. you're not already making that from the cookie. So yes. like what I would have done is you're at $1,000 a month in sales. Bring that to $5,000 a month through marketing, Too through much. social yeah. media, yeah. build up more of a momentum. Mm -hmm. And then when you know you could do a break even and say, we're making $6,000 a month and instead of pulling that in as profit, we're just gonna put it here, reinvest it and we're gonna start the storefront. And then if everything just stays the same, we're not gonna lose yes. anything. It's just, yes. it's already sustained. Yeah. I think the store would only bring you more money because you've already got the push. True. Now I feel like the store might be a bit of a drag on the net profit just because you don't quite have as much momentum as I think yes. you could. It's just a lot of money to invest. So when I think of investing mm -hmm. 25 grand mm -hmm. or five grand a month, I think, for two grand a month. Okay. You could invest that in marketing. What would you do in my place, you know, since we are already, you know, uh, in talk with the uh, with the broker and everything, would you postpone it? Honestly, I probably would. Really? I think this, I just think a storefront, it's yeah. good to have a storefront. Yes. But man, I think you could crush it online. Just to be able to get your sales enough to show a proof of concept that yeah. you could be making Okay. You know, eight thousand dollars a month. Because in my mind, if the store is going to be, let's say, five thousand dollars a month mm. overhead, you would need to be making at least seven to eight thousand dollars a month oh, that, to make that worth it. Yeah. Because you have to think the risk associated with Absolutely, that, yeah. the time, yes. all the headaches that come up. Oh yeah. Employees. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, health insurance for employees, taxes. Now that you mentioned, you know, marketing would probably work, you know, uh, I would definitely consider that and give it a yeah. try, you Here, know? Yeah, here's the thing too. Yeah. Let's say you open the storefront. Yeah. You're gonna need marketing to begin with. Absolutely, which you, yeah. you don't have right yeah, now. Yeah, you're gonna so need like, that anyway. So now you're gonna need the yes. marketing in addition to having yes. the overhead of the storefront. All of that overhead. Yeah, and I'll tell you, just, just from what I've seen, yeah. from, from friends who have opened franchises, mm -hmm. they're there every day. You could even hire out the best people, they will call in sick, they will say, I had an emergency come yeah. up, my car broke down, my oh, kid yeah. is sick, I yes. can't close, I have a doctor's appointment. 
And no matter what it is, you have mm -hmm. to drop everything to do it. Yes. And you need marketing on top of that. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, man, if you get the marketing down, you're gonna have to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. have it your goal to say, yeah. by the end of this year, we wanna be making consistently seven grand a month. And if we do seven grand a month, and our profit is five, yeah. consistently, we're gonna take that five and get the storefront, and we're gonna reinvest it. And then that way, you yeah. already have the momentum going yeah. into it. I mean, that's that's my biggest concern. Yeah, you know, putting it this way, it's 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 kind of scary. We definitely need to think that through, you know, before we uh, we go full on with the store. Another thing that you could do is there's a lot of food reviewers on yeah. TikTok yes. and on Instagram where yeah. they just go to random businesses, okay. they try them out, and they give an honest review. Yes, it's very simple to reach out to all these people yeah. and just say, hey. I have a business. I'm not expecting anything in return, but I yeah. just want to send you some cookies. Yeah. I enjoy your content, and yeah, I, hope, yeah. I hope you like them. Yeah. And there's no expectation that they're going to post anything. Okay. If they do, it's a bonus. Wow, but I've had a lot of brands, just in general, that I've seen that send mm -hmm. out tons of product. Yeah. And they just know, you know, hey, one out of every yeah. five that they send, maybe they tag them on Instagram and say yes. thank you. Yeah, that's if you amazing. like it, great. If not, yeah. that's okay too. Let us know how we can make it better. Yeah, I've seen those reviews, yeah. you know, those review videos on YouTube. I've, you know, they're, yeah. And the other thing you could do, this is what I think would be fantastic, yes. is go to any sort of wedding supply shop and just bring in cookies for free. Amazing. And yeah. just say, hey, I want to be able to supply cookies for mm -hmm. you, totally free of charge, because the cost yeah. for you is going to be 60 cents a cookie. Let's just say that's, a hundred dollars out of pocket from you. Okay. But that's your marketing. Yes. You're gonna give them free cookies. How many yeah. wedding boutiques are out here in Las Vegas? Yes, yes. It's so easy. Instead of a cake or little desserts, have cookies. Yes. And it's also very easy when they're in there doing mm -hmm. their wedding fittings, they True. have their family. And if they have the cookies, they like the cookies. Yes, yeah. Just say we offer cookies for weddings. We could that's we could nice. bake them the day of, yeah. you know, the night before and mm -hmm. bring them to you. Mm -hmm. It's just getting word of mouth. And think of different areas that you could put your cookies where it just seems natural. Amazing ideas. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I would do, if you're not doing it already, yeah. is creating an email list of your customers. Do you have one? We don't. Oh, big mistake. Yeah, I know. Anytime someone places an order, yeah. you save their email. Yes. And every now and then, you're gonna send them an email saying, mm -hmm. hey, we'd like to give you 15% yeah. off your order in the yeah. next 24 hours as a thank you. I should reach out more. Yeah. Ver versus the customer reaching out to me, which, which they do you actually, to. you know, asking for more cookies. But I should be the one reaching out. You're right. You need to. Yeah. Also, what I would do is spend an hour a day going on TikTok, mm -hmm. typing in baking cookies. Cookies. Yeah. Just yeah. search for that. Yeah, and just yeah. watch an hour of videos a day of what does well on TikTok. Yeah. Learn from that. Yeah. And you'll yes. be able to see what everyone's doing and you'll be able to see the shots they're getting. I mean, you have the equipment. You yes. can do it. I've seen you do it in the past, so you can yes. do it again. Yeah. And then share the story behind it. I agree with you. We really need to get into it. Yeah. So I would rather see the $5,000 a month go into marketing mm -hmm. and word of mouth and just grassroots getting this to five to $6,000 a month in revenue. Okay. That's what I'd, I, I would love to see because okay. you're going to make the investment anyway. You, you are changing my mind. I might just go for it. Let, let go to the store and start advertising heavily, obviously hiring the people who know what they're doing and going from there, yeah, spending the money yeah. in the right way. Okay, I'm going to break this open, ready? Oh my gosh. But that's what I like. I like when they, they are gooey yeah. like this. Everybody does. That's an amazing cookie. I would pay three, I'll give you $3 right now. Graham doesn't need, I'll give you $3 for Graham's cookie too.